What's up guys, it's me Alan, I'm back with another video, and this video is going to be specifically regarding Charlotte Flair, and I will explain that in a moment, um, but I want to make this video to talk about what's been going on with her, at least from what we've seen, and sort of just dive into my thoughts regarding this, because if I'm being honest, I'm concerned for her, and... I'll explain that in a moment, but um, I would like to hear what you guys think down in the comments, so let me know down there. Uh, also, make sure to like and subscribe, and with all that being said, um, I'm going to try my best to put all my thoughts into words, because with something like this, it's kind of hard to do, but like I said, I'm going to try my best, and um, we'll see where it goes. So, oh, and if Charlotte ever watches this, well... I'd be surprised, but cool. So, I think a point to start at would be going back to the the SmackDown after Crown Jewel and the now infamous title swap segment, which was the main event segment, which went completely off the rails and involved crap tons of shenanigans that seriously just... It's still crazy to think about. So if you don't know what happened, I've already done a couple of videos regarding that situation and the fallout from it. So go ahead and go check those out. But to make a long story short, Charlotte and Becky, the holders of the Raw and SmackDown Women's titles, had to swap titles because they were drafted to the opposing brand. Charlotte drafted from Raw to SmackDown, Becky vice versa. Now this could have been avoided if Bianca had beaten Charlotte on Raw that uh the monday before crown jewel and then if sasha won the match between her bianca and becky at crown jewel that obviously didn't happen and so the title swap segment happened basically charlotte went completely off script she wouldn't hand her title to becky directly uh she threw it on the you know the the mat and Sonya had her go get it, give it to her, and then Sonya got the the uh, the Raw or the SmackDown title from Becky, and then handed the titles to the two women. And then afterward, uh, backstage, there was a heated argument between Charlotte and Becky. It didn't get physical, but it got bad, and Charlotte ended up having to get escorted out of the building. Um. A lot of the women in the WWE's locker room uh, came to Becky's defense. The heat from this situation was all put on Charlotte. The blame for it was all put on Charlotte. And while we didn't hear from any specific, specifically named wrestlers, you know, the from what was heard or I get from sources, there were some that were saying that they don't feel comfortable working with Charlotte right now. They find that Charlotte's, you know, being more and more difficult. Uh, there's a report or rumor that Sonya wanted to fight Charlotte after this happened and so on and so forth. And also a big one that it seems like Charlotte's been isolating herself from everybody else. We will come back to that. So fast forward to Survivor Series. They have their match. Becky wins. And... Afterward, we get an interview from Becky backstage. Um, it's on the WWE's YouTube channel, by the way. It, it was happening right as the uh, men's Survivor Series teams uh, were coming out. And you could tell because as she's about, as Becky's about to speak, as she's trying to get her thoughts together, uh, so you can hear Seth Rollins' theme go off uh, in the background. So... Kind of coincidental there, but anyway. Becky gave an extremely emotional interview. It was short, but extremely emotional. And I don't think it was her being in character at all. That interview, if you, I had to watch it before I made this video. Um, but if you watch that interview back, it was about as raw and as personal as as you could get Becky talking about her getting emotional before the match happened. Um, 
you know, the emotions that she's had, the, the, how she's been feeling lately regarding Charlotte, the fact that her, that she cares about Charlotte or did, you know, talking about the friendship that they had, the fact that they almost died in a car crash at one point, which I had never heard that before. So that was, that caught my attention, but a lot of the consensus was, you know, watching that interview was that this situation has gotten really bad on Charlotte's end, and it has affected Becky. And I don't think it's just affected her. I think it's probably affected a lot of people in the locker room. But Becky especially because she had that close friendship with her. And to see that go away the way that it has, it honestly sucks. And now, as of recent, there are reports that Charlotte and Andrade have broken up. That Charlotte was the one that broke it off. They had been dating for over two, for almost two years up to this point. Uh, apparently, they had been engaged for like almost a year or what or what have you. And now that relationship is done. And. You know, I mean, Andrade really hasn't said anything publicly about it. Neither has Charlotte, for that matter. But it just makes you wonder, what the fuck is going on behind the scenes? Because, you know, when it comes to wrestling, you don't always get to see the, the full raw emotions from these wrestlers. They're personal emotions because they have to put that aside for their characters and whatnot so it's kind of rare to see someone's personal feelings and personal emotions come out like that like with becky's interview but you can tell that's what's happening and with charlotte i just have this question of how much of her dad has rubbed off on her because let's be honest here when you look at her when you look at her character it screams rick flair the gear the robes she has the woo chants like her dad did it's essentially her father's legacy living through her and you know, and I'm sure Charlotte's trying to make a legacy of her own, but you can't argue with the fact that she's almost, it's almost like she's living her dad's legacy and that hers is just an extension of it. And yes, you know, their par- parents want to see their kids succeed. They want to see their kids extend, you know, extend that family legacy and uphold the family name in, in whatever business they're in. And that's understandable, but there's living your legacy through your children and there's your children trying to build their own legacy, which are two separate things. And if I had to be honest, I think Charlotte needs to distance herself from her father. And I've said this numerous times, especially after the dark side of the ring episode regarding the plane ride from hell, when that came out, Um, And all the shit that came out about Rick from that. I said point blank. Charlotte needs to distance herself. The way I see it is that Charlotte. My honest opinion. Needs to. Or should at least. Take some time off. And just take time to herself. By herself. And just evaluate everything. You know. Like. You know, I'm not saying that she shouldn't talk to her dad, but you know, try to maybe consult with other family, you know, whatever friend, whoever she might has, or whoever she might have left as friends and things like that. Because honestly, things do need to change. I think Charlotte needs a completely new character and needs to break away from what she has now because everything with that character is synonymous with her father. And it's, I mean, let's be honest here. She's probably going to be the one that's going to break Rick's record of most world titles simply by the fact that she's gotten so many in, what, a six, seven year span with the company. And that 
that's just not going to change because she's always getting pushed. She's always winning the title, or almost always for that matter. And that's what pisses fans off because they don't want to see that. They want to see something else, you know? Biggest example of that, WrestleMania a couple years ago with Becky Lynch. I, I mean, fans wanted to see her. They didn't want to see Charlotte because we'd seen enough of Charlotte. And yet the WWE shoehorned Charlotte in there. Obviously, Becky ended up winning, but she did, but Charlotte didn't need to be there. At the end of the day, it's just... I'm concerned as a fan. And you could say that, well, why do you care? It's not like Charlotte cares about you as a fan. And you're right, probably. I mean, I've never met her. I've never had any interaction with her. I'm just a fan. And I understand that. But I'm also a fan that cares. Like, I've made videos regarding, you know, the shit that Alexa Bliss deals with on social media. Actually, that video, I talked about both her and uh, Nikki Cross, or Nikki A.S.H., and I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I should do another video on Alexa simply for the fact that I just keep fu fucking seeing shit, you know, with people being assholes on social media towards her, and it pisses me off, but that's not what we're here to talk about right now. I care because that's just who I am as a person, and when I see things like this, obviously you could take it at face value and just say that Charlotte's just being an ass, she's being difficult, she's she's being full of herself, thinking that she's above everybody else, and this, and that, and this, and that. But there's something deeper there. There's something behind all of that. And maybe it just, maybe it is just how Charlotte is. Maybe part of it is her dad's rubbed off on her. Maybe it's something else that we don't know about and probably won't know about unless, you know, unless Charlotte says something about it. But I have genuine concern because for Charlotte because the way I see it, this is only going to get worse before it gets better. Somebody needs to talk to her. Somebody needs to sit sit down with her and have a conversation and just kind of ask the question, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? And be honest with me. Because to me, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like things are okay. It feels to me like something behind the scenes is wrong. And maybe it's one of those deals where Charlotte's just holding it in and it's building up over time and she doesn't have an out and maybe she doesn't have an outlet to let that out. Whatever that quote unquote may be. Again, I could be completely wrong. And if I am, fine. I'll take it. You know, shit happens. But I wouldn't be surprised if there is something going on behind the scenes with Charlotte and it might be time for somebody to, it might just be time for Charlotte to take a step back from the wrestling business and reevaluate everything, reevaluate her life up to this point, her career, what she wants to do moving forward and how much more does she want to do within the WWE and within wrestling in general. And at the end of the day, you know, evaluate what she wants her legacy to be. Does she want it to be where she's always mentioned as, you know, being the, the child of Ric Flair and being an extension of his legacy? Or does she want to have a legacy of her own that, yes, will still technically be tied to Rick, but shows that she's doesn't want to forever be linked that way, I guess. It, that might sound confusing, but I think you get what I mean. Like, just how some, some people who try to break off from the, you know, the history of their famous, you know, parents and try to forge their own path. 
it's kind of the same situation here. But, um, like I said in the intro, let me know your thoughts down below. And let me know what you think it, the, the situation is. Could it just be that this is just who Charlotte is? Or is there something else that's going on that we don't know about yet? And probably won't know about, but maybe someday we will. With all that being said, thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. Peace.